Larry Hohal joins us this morning on WILK to talk about uh, Luzerne County Railroad. I got an email from someone who says, I've read the book, and it is fascinating, easy to read, and lays out the evidence to back up claims in an easy-to-follow format. Everyone, in all caps, in Luzerne County should read this book. Well, then you should have a line at the Barnes & Noble on Sunday when you're there, Larry. Well, we're hoping so. I, I've, uh, I've paid most of my friends to come over. Have you yeah. now? <laughs> in the, in the tradition County of Luzerne County, yes. why not? Yeah. It's the way we do things around here. I pay my friends to come over yeah. and they show up. Yeah. Um, talking about the the genesis of, of the book, which was your uh, foray in, into the business world after you had been a, a police officer and you had seen some uh, some darkness on the horizon, you decided to uh, do something that was totally different than your police career. Right. I, I um, quit the police department and uh, started a medical equipment company, and that transformed into a manufacturing of medical equipment, and that became a worldwide venture. Uh, we sold product in nine countries. And I had, uh, at the time I sold the company, I had 130 full-time employees, uh, eight U.S. warehouses, and uh, had sales uh, in excess of $15, $16 million a year. So um, very um, fantastic uh, ride, if you will. Um, I I became uh, an authority on uh, medical equipment, medical systems, and was actually asked to meet with the King of Spain to explain how the Medicare system uh, works for in-home equipment Mm -hmm. rentals and sales and things like that. And we actually became friends with the King of Spain and was asked back and and spent a weekend with him um, uh, playing war games over there with paintball pistols. (laughs) Incredible. Now, yeah. how did you how did you switch gears from your police work to that? It, was it something that you saw here in northeastern Pennsylvania and your bulb went on and you thought, aha, I can uh, really yeah. do well with yeah. that? Yeah. Before I was a police officer, I, I was a, a medic, a combat medic, and uh, a, an emergency medical technician uh, as a volunteer for the local ambulance squad. So I was exposed to medical equipment and, and the like, and I worked uh, for a, a short time for a medical company that supplied products like that. So I saw an opportunity um, and started the, the manufacturing of the, of the products, and, and it's, it's one of those fantastic stories. I was, I was featured on PM Magazine when we used to have that mm-hmm. in the area, Remember it? Yeah. and that, world, that, that actually um, aired nationally. You know, they, the different uh, stations would pick up different uh, PM Magazine. It was a local story, but you know, I, I met with the deputy assistant director of um, Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C., and he said he recognized me because he saw my story on, on their, their version of PM Magazine. So. so all was going well. Then you sold this business. Why so- did you decide to sell it? I sold the business to be, honestly, to be financially secure for my, myself, my family, my children for the rest of their lives. That was the number one reason I sold the business. And uh, how'd that work out that, for you? That really didn't work out very well. Uh, <laughs> Um, when all was said and done, um, the people that I sold it to was a privately owned aerospace defense contracting company out of St. Louis. And um, right from the get-go, we, we butted heads, and, and I bowed out. I, I left the company, even though I had a long-term employment contract for six figures a year um, and, and a whole bunch of other money coming towards, uh, towards me uh, for different parts of the contract. Um, uh, and I, I bowed out gracefully. Uh, I have the newspaper articles that show what I said when I left the company. And um, even though they treated me very badly, uh, I didn't say bad things about them. It, it was just a difference in management style, la, 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 you know, whatever. Um, they, at some point, um, uh, I believe they, they decided that they didn't want to pay me any more money that they owed me. And it would be cheaper to just simply uh, litigate and crush me than it would be to pay me. And they did a heck of a good job. And that's where your entry into the court system began in Luzerne County, correct? That's correct. Okay, you had some sort of a dispute with them, correct, about your, what was it, a pen or the terms of your employment or what Yeah, was there, there, a number of issues arose, um, but the biggest one is that we caught them uh, conducting material fraud um, on some inventories. I brought in a big eight accounting firm from Philadelphia that did an inventory, and they videotaped the whole thing. 
uh, and it was massive. It was it was a lot of money. It was a lot of fraud. We caught them red handed, and I had no choice. They weren't they were not going to negotiate with me. Uh, I had no choice but to file a lawsuit against them, and we were in the process of doing that as much as I don't like lawsuits. I didn't, there were no other remedies for me. We didn't have an arbitration clause or anything like that. Uh, so, so they basically uh, came after me. You know, the best defense is a good offense. And uh, um, I had gone on to another venture. I had opened a, started another company from scratch and was going in a different direction. And they made the claim that I was competing with them. Um, and I had a hearing in front of Judge Tool, President Judge Tool at the time. And Judge Tool ruled 100% in my favor mm-hmm. uh, after a two-day trial that I, my activities did not violate my non-compete. And as a matter of fact, I quote him in the book as saying he, he looked at, at me directly, made eye contact at the end of the hearing and said, go forth and prosper. That's exactly what he said to me. Um, so eight months later, he goes on vacation. Judge Tool goes on vacation. The very day he leaves, I get served with another lawsuit, and I'm in front of a different judge within 20, 48 hours. And that's Judge Capolini. And we walked into the courtroom and said, Judge, this has already been heard. Here's the paperwork. Um, there's no way that this can go forward. They're trying to deceive the court. And the judge said... You're not going to believe what he said. Well, we'll hear it on the other side because you hear the music, so you know it's time for the news with Bud Brown on WILK. Larry Hohal is with us today. On Sunday, he'll be at Barnes & Noble in the Arena Hub Plaza in Wilkes-Barre signing his book, Luzerne County Railroad, at 2 p.m. Larry Hohal is here on WILK this morning to talk about his experience. Luzerne County Railroad, you know about walking into the fire because you did it. One judge goes on vacation in Luzerne County. or Luzerne County. He had heard your case. He had said, uh, go forth and, and prosper which is kind of Star Trekian, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then another judge says, wait a minute now, Larry. Right. What happened? Okay. So we end up in front of Judge Capolini and say, okay, Judge Tool heard this case originally and he's gone on vacation. He just left two days ago. He'll be back in another two business days Monday morning. So why don't we just wait for him? Oh, this matter is so important. It is so pressing. It is so urgent that we cannot wait. We cannot wait to start this. Even though we we both know that the Luzerne County court system moves like a glacier, right? We both know that. And at the time, was that not common practice? That was. Uh, What what, uh, happened here was they filed for what's called a preliminary injunction, and that is an emergency procedure that takes everything that was on the calendar, everything that was scheduled, and sets it to the side because it cannot wait. Okay, cannot wait. And um, uh, my ju- my uh, my attorney said to the judge, he said, "Well, uh, you know, I have all this information right here, and um, you'll see that that what they've done here is duplicated what was already heard. It's already mm-hmm. it's on appeal. I have the appeal here. It's on appeal to Superior Court." And the judge said, um, "There's no way that he would be able to know if it was exactly the same thing unless he heard testimony." And my attorney responded. And he did a good job. He said, well, even after you hear testimony, you won't know because you weren't there for the first trial. That really, really upset Judge Capolini. He got very angry at that point and said, and his response was, I guess I'll just have to read all of the testimony, won't I? And, and he said, present your first witness to the op- opposing attorney. And off we were. So we, you we, didn't expect that at all? Oh, No. We weren't going to trial. There was no way. But you were actually going to trial, (laughs) even though you didn't think that you were. Yeah. And nine months later, nine months of of trial on this emergency hearing, 17 days of testimony took place for a trial that had previously been done in two days uh, in front of Judge Tool. And, And I couldn't figure out, we couldn't figure out what that was all about. And basically what it's all about is draining the opposition's piggy bank. They will dry you up, and they will make sure that you don't have the funds to continue the fight. They don't. It's almost it's almost um, surreal to be involved in something like that. To have um, um, dozens of, of of witnesses get up and say nothing of any consequence. To have truckloads of of um, um, 
evidence presented literally with with men in coveralls carrying in hand trucks full of documentation that say nothing about what this case is all about because when and when you do file an appeal you have to duplicate a lot of uh, well you have to duplicate duplicate the transcript which is an enormous fee um, and a lot of the evidence and and, and it's all about it, it has nothing to do with who's right and who's wrong so these guys are just trying to bleed you basically yeah did they bleed you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I ended up bank- going bankrupt. I filed bankruptcy, um, uh, which was a horrible, horrible thing for somebody that's only been successful with er- about everything I've ever tried in my life. Um, and then uh, after Judge Capolini uh, issued the injunction and closed my new business down, which was doing gangbusters. And this it, was a, you say this was a, a new business. This was not like your old business. No. Uh, totally different customers, totally different product as far as the application, even regulated by the federal government by two totally different um, agencies. One, my product could not be ever used in the medical field, and the medical products that I used to manufacture could never be used in the industrial field. It's, it's a totally different. They could not even produce a single mass mailing where I accidentally mailed one of their customers something, let alone sold them anything. They never produced any of that. And I really I really don't want to spend a lot of time trying my case here right. because there's what happened and how it happened is so much bigger than my case. The, the safeguards that are out there, they don't exist. Believe me when I tell you, the Judicial Conduct Board is is my focus. It is it, that is ground zero for me. Those people need to be investigated and need to be investigated by a federal grand jury. And I will give you example after example after example. Okay, and, we'll do that after the break. Uh, and I am not a fan of the JCB myself, so I've I've actually said the same thing you have is that this this is akin again to the fox investigating the hens to see what they're up to i mean it's this it may be even worse we'll work on a new analogy during the break on wylk but i want to uh, remind you that larry hohall is in town he lives outside of town now his book is luzerne county railroad he'll be signing it on sunday june 19th at 2 p.m at barnes and noble arena hub plaza wilkesbury if you have questions for him about uh, your experiences or you just want to welcome him back 883 one 800 437 Sue Henry, WILK News Radio.com. You're listening on 910 in Scranton, 980 Wilkes-Barre, 1300 Hazleton, and 103.1 FM.